Jonah, the book of Jonah, chapter number 4. The book of Jonah, chapter number 4. Now don't let that scare you if you can't go immediately to Jonah. Just go to Psalms and start going to the right. And uh, you'll go through those prophets. And if you've got a Schofield Bible, he's on page 944. If you hadn't got a Schofield Bible, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Amen. Oh, uh, page 944 in your Schofield Bible, the book of Jonah. Uh, we'll, we'll look at just uh, a few verses here and there. Boy, I'm excited about this message the Lord has laid on my heart this week as I think about where our church is, where our people are. And I believe God's got a word for us this morning. The book of Jonah, uh, we'll read some verses in chapter 4, but in chapter 1, of verse 1, the book of Jonah begins like this. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah. And uh, in Jonah chapter 4, verse 4, Then said the Lord, Doest thou well to be angry? So Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east side of the city, and there made him a booth. And he sat under it in the shadow till he might see what would become of the city. The book of Jonah ends as it begins with God speaking to a man. You see, the life of Jonah cannot be written without God. You take God out of Jonah's history and there's no history to write. You take God out of Jonah's story and there is no story. And as sure as we can say that of Jonah, we can say it of each other this morning apart from God there is no life there is no story to tell and as sure as we can say this morning that Jonah's story starts out with God speaking to him it ends up with God speaking to him and how we ought to be able to shout over that this morning that our life is that life that we can hear from the Lord in Jonah's life in these four chapters where we meet Jonah Uh, We also meet God continually all through this story. We find God in verse number 1. We find God in verse number 11 of chapter 4. And as we meet Jonah through this story, we actually meet Jonah. It's almost like we meet him through his pain. Uh, Thank God for how he set the song service up this morning. The song service this morning, if you didn't uh, pick up on it, it was all about people in their pain reaching out to a God who can meet their needs in their pain. And uh, thank God that he heard my cry. He heard the cry of me when I cried out to him. Thank God this morning we can by faith say unto this mountain, our God can move any mountain. Uh, So thank God for in our places of pain where we meet each other, we also meet God and see that he's the God of the mountain or he's the God who provides for us. Uh, in, in the book of Jonah, uh, as we say provided things, provision, you find four provided things in the book of Jonah. Chapter 1 and verse number 17. If you found it now, I've been here in pages turn. Is everybody in Jonah? Say amen. amen. Verse 17, you find some provided things. Verse 17 of chapter number 1 says, Now the Lord prepared a great fish. So we find a great fish. Jesus said in Matthew 12 and verse 40, as he compared himself to Jonah, he called this great fish a whale. And so in Jonah's life, we first see a provided thing or a prepared thing in a whale. Chapter 4, verse 6, And the Lord God prepared a gourd. Verse 7 says, And the Lord God prepared a worm. And then in verse 8 it says, God prepared a vehement east wind. So we find four things that God had provided for Jonah, if you will, uh, that we find these provided things in God's hand. We find them to be very painful things in Jonah's life. As we look at Jonah, it would be very easy for us to get so caught up in his pain uh, that we miss the purpose that God had for him in his pain. I believe maybe this morning at Greatest Mission Baptist Church, one of the greatest tactics of the enemy, one of the greatest tools the devil may be trying to use against you this morning is to have you so overwhelmed in your pain that you miss the provisions that God has placed in your pain so he might bring you to working the plan he has for your life this morning. 
I want to preach this right this morning. I, I want this pulpit to be a provision for you this morning because if we just get honest this morning as Brother Lenny started us out this morning. Everybody here this morning has got a place they hurt and amen. Everybody here this morning knows what it is to have these places of pain. In Jonah's places of pain, we find a whale, we find a gourd, we find a worm, and we find a, a wind. It'd be so easy for us to get focused uh, even on the pain that we miss uh, how these things were placed in Jonah's life that God's purpose might be revealed to him even through his pain. Now let me say off first that, uh, that Jonah didn't tell this story as he went along through the story. Jonah didn't write the book of Jonah out of a whale's belly, amen. Jonah didn't write the book of Jonah when he was sitting under this gourd plan. He, he didn't write the book of Jonah as the worm took the plan away from him. He didn't write the book of Jonah when the, the wind came. He, he wrote the book of Jonah as he began to remember the things that God had brought him through in his pain. What are you saying, Brother Steve? Don't write your story too quick, amen. Don't be so quick to tell your story that those hearing your story get so focused on your pain that they miss out the God of your pain who was there with provision while you was in the pain. Don't tell your story too soon. It'll cause you to focus on your pain and stood of the purpose God has for your life. In Jonah chapter 1, all the way to Jonah chapter 4, we find us the story being played out as, as Jonah remembers it or as Jonah reflects on it. In Jonah chapter 1, you find a rebellion showing up in a Christian's life. Oh yes, Jonah was a Christian. He wasn't only just a Christian, he was a prophet. He was a preacher. He was God's man. We saying, Brother Steve, even Christians and preachers can make a mess. I'm just going to go on and say right now. I'm just going to go and get honest with you now. As sure as we see chapter 1 in Jonah's life where he was in rebellion and he was running, I believe I'm preaching to somebody this morning that knows what it is to be rebelling against God, to be running from God. I'm just going to go and let the rubber meet the road, all right? We all rebelling some way and we all running somewhere this morning. If you think you're not, you just wells these on out, man. But I hope you don't get any further than the foyer and God will just go on and lay you down right there and you'll have to hear this, save me. Boy, in Jonah chapter 1, we find rebellion. We find God's man running. And, and then in Jonah chapter 2, we, we find a rescue at sea. Amen. We, we find repentance out of a whale's belly. In Jonah chapter 3, we find restoration where it said the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. That, that amazes me. That kindly leads me to where I believe the Lord's leading me tonight. Isn't it something that Jonah wanted a second chance? But he didn't think nobody else ought to get a second chance. Boy, we see Jonah in restoration and revival. Jonah chapter 4, we see where we find Jonah here. As he's went out of the city. He's made him a little booth. He, he's ready to sit and see what will happen. We, he's reasoned all this out in his mind. And, and then it closes out as God begins to speak to him that last time. And God gives Jonah a revelation that I believe will call him to, to reflect back over his life. And, and scholars don't believe Jonah actually wrote the book of Jonah. They believe Jonah in his preaching as he carried what happened in his story. Uh, they believe the book of Jonah was recorded by those that heard this message preached after Jonah had already lived it. Don't tell your story too soon. Amen. Wherever you are in your pain this morning, you have no idea what God may be doing in your pain this morning, what God may have already provided in your pain this morning. Don't tell your story too soon. But let me say this now. Don't try to tell your story while you're at the place of rebellion. Don't try to tell your story while you're on the run. If you ever tried to write while you're walking, let alone running, 
You'll go all over the page and won't nobody be able to make any sense out of it. I thank God when Jonah gave us the book of Jonah, it wasn't the Jonah who was there in chapter 1. It was the Jonah who looked back on four chapters of his life. Now, I've got my notes right here. i got to run a rabbit. So let me run a rabbit. Don't know that I'll ever get back on the trail after I run this rabbit. But I want to run this rabbit. See, you can't preach on, on Jonah without, uh, without first looking a little bit at this rebellion and this time of running that he did. Where did all this come from, Brother Steve? Well, in Jonah chapter 1, uh, it said that Jonah received uh, a call. He received a command from God. When Jonah received his call, it was to go to Nineveh, that great city, and to preach against it. Now, God gave his man a mission, but he also gave him a message. And he didn't even give Jonah a, a gospel message, amen. He told Jonah, said, you go into the city and you tell them they got 40 days and they're going to be smoking, amen, and not camels or Marlboro lights. They got 40 days, their evil, their wickedness has come up to me. Man, if you'll study out what Nineveh was, this Assyrian capo, son, they were a wicked people, man. When Jonah heard to go to Nineveh, rebellion began to stir in him. He hated these people. He was prejudiced against these people. Brother Steve, are we anything, are we anything like Jonah? Well, who do you feel hard at this morning? We all got prejudice in us this morning. Boy, this really got real to me, Brother Chad, because I'm telling you what, if there's a man in North Mississippi that a Haji about turn his stomach, it's this one. If I walk in their store and smell that smell and see those lights on the outside, I immediately don't want to walk in and, and do business with them. And Brother Lanny will shout over that and holler over that, but I ain't so sure God's within a million miles of that. You say, why is that, Brother Steve? Because he hung on that cross for them just like he did for me. Now, we're just going to be honest this morning, amen. Boy, he went in. He got a word from God. Now, don't be too hard on Jonah to put this where we live today. It would be like this morning, Brother Dustin, when you knelt in the altar, if God said, Dustin, I want you to sell everything you got. I want you to go to Syria, be there by the end of the week. I want you to go into the ISIS stronghold, and I want you to preach judgment to them. Uh-uh. Jonah rebels against God. Rebellion will always lead to running from God in some way or another. Now don't be too hard on Jonah. We already said all of us this morning are rebelling and running from something. And there's some things that Jonah found in his rebellion and on his run. Now any preacher ought to touch on some things out of Jonah chapter 1. And, and I'm going to touch on them and I'm going to get back on the track. Amen. If you're rebelling against God this morning, if you're running from God this morning, hear, hear this preacher, this is your day that God means for you to stop running. Because if you hadn't figured out yet, Jonah didn't know it when he was doing it. He couldn't write this when he did it. But as he looked back on it, Jonah find out any time you're running from God, you'll always go down. Amen. Verse 3 said, Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. You can run away from God's presence. Yes, you can get so far away from him that you don't even think you can feel him anymore. But let me tell you something, honey. In your rebellion and in your running, you might not be thinking about God, but he ain't ever quit thinking about you. You might not can see him, honey, but he's got his eye on you. You may think you're hidden this morning. You've run to a place that God won't ever find you, but I promise he was there before you ever got there. You find Jonah going down. You find him going down to Joppa. And you find him going down into the ship. And, and you find him going from the presence of the Lord. You see uh, this ship that he went down into. You can count on this running from God. It will always carry you down. But you will also find a ship just as sure as Jonah found a ship. Rebellion and running 
will always lead you to a place where the devil has you arrived. The devil will give you a way to go. Amen. You're so in your heart you're going to rebel against God and you're going to run from God. The devil will have you some transportation to go on. Some good runners here this morning. Amen. I've known some of you a long time. You've known me a long time. And hadn't we run and the best the devils had to offer, amen. But if you found out something about the devil's ride, Brother Clay, it ain't got much of warranty to it. Now it may look shiny and sound like it's running good, honey. But hear me now, it ain't going to run near good, Brother Wayne. It's he makes you think it's going to run. He just wants you to get in to go for the ride. Jonah found the spirit for a few coming this morning. You won't have to look hard. The devil will have you the way to go. Made the thing to me is that he found the spirit from Joppa to Tarsus. The word's on the wall as he goes down to Joppa. And he gets on a ship and he goes down into the ship to, to go to Tarsus. Now from where Jonah was when God called him, Nineveh was only 500 miles away. But to get to where Jonah was wanting to go in his running, Tarshish, that was going to be a 2,500-mile journey. What are you saying, preacher? Running from God will always carry you a long way from where you ever thought you'd go. Matter of fact, it would have been a lot easier on Jonah if he'd have just obeyed God and went where God... He wouldn't have had to went but 500 miles. But in disobeying God, he's going to go 2,500 miles. If any of you ever been way where you ought not have been, trying to run away from God, but everywhere you run, he was already there. Disobeying God's a lot harder than obeying God. I've just come to this place, man. Don't tell me it's hard to live for Jesus. I about heard that. It's hard to live for Jesus. I don't. Jesus said it's hard to belong to him and to not live for him. What you want to set yourself up for failure for, man? Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I'm a winner already. It's when I don't walk after that spirit, when I give myself to that flesh, that's what makes it hard to live for Jesus. Oh, Jonah's, Jonah's in the flesh here. Verse 3 says he paid the fare. He paid the fare. The devil will furnish you a ride now, but his tickets ain't cheap. Well, if we could stand and give testimony this morning, if we could get back in the bank all that we've spent in the devil's world, all that you've wasted. My young people now, you listen up and give me your eyes right here. All of you that's wanting to get out of the house. And if your cries been, if I could just get 18, I'm getting out of here where somebody's telling me what to do. I'm getting away from these rules. I'm getting away from these regulations. Hear me, honey. If I could go back to high school, I'd fail every year. Man, I wouldn't graduate till I was 40. Because my daddy always said, you're going to finish school if you have to stay here until you're 40 to do it. He was waxing some wisdom on me then, Brother Herbert, and I didn't know it. Let me tell you something now. You can get out, Chunder, quick as you want to. Let me tell you what that world is, honey. It's taxing. I'm talking about it's costly. I'm talking about it'll wear you out. I'm talking about it'll get its hooks in you and everywhere you look around. They won't be enough. They won't ever be enough. You'll run out. You'll run out. And you'll run out. Why is that? All oh, because all it started was just a little rebellion. Just a little bit of running. You found you a ship. Y'all remember when you went in debt first time for something that you knew you couldn't pay for, but you just had to have? Some of us still ain't got over it. Amen. We still pay for it. I can remember when I went to work at Action back in 1980, we'd have those meetings. And old Jackie Hooker would come in, Brother Mike, and he'd tell us how great the market was. And he'd say, man, we sold more chairs. He'd say, it's going to be a great year. If y'all want a new truck, go get you one, man. If, if y'all, What was he doing? He was enticing us. 
to go get our name on something that we would be in bondage into that that we had went and got and we couldn't ever think about quitting action because now because of a blessing we done put ourselves in some burdens the reason the Baptist church is in the shape she's in now is because we came up in days of blessings but we got rebellious and we started running and we've got so much bondage on us now when I try to preach on Sunday morning you're sitting there with your mind bombarded by this and in bondage of that you're thinking about last week next week tomorrow what's going to happen I'm telling you if you get on the devil's boat it's going to cost you but it says he paid the fare man that's how deceived we can be man that's how deceived we can be he paid the fare thereof So Jonah went down in his rebellion. He found a ship while he was running. It carried him further than he ever meant to go while he was running. It cost him more than he thought he'd ever spend. And what the devil said was going to be a smooth trip turned into a stormy trip. If you ain't ever been on the devil's boat, let me tell you, honey. He might promise you smooth sailing, but if you belong to the Lord's, it will not be smooth sailing. God will not let you rest at a place you think you can lay down and rest in. Has anybody ever thought they'd just quit on God? They'd just get to the place that God would leave them alone. It's where Jonah thought he was. Verse number for says the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea. He didn't say the devil sent it. He said the Lord sent it. Well, he said, to Steve, you get on the devil's boat. You go to giving him your money. You go to riding with him. The devil will rock, or the Lord will rock your world, man. Sent a wind into the sea. There was a tempest in the sea. So that the ship was like to be broken. See, running with the devil, it won't only cause you some bad sailing, it'll cause them around you some bad sailing. Hey, some mamas and daddies here this morning, your heart's breaking over the way your young'uns is living. You didn't go looking for that storm. They's the one went and got on that boat. They paid that fare. But you know what? They may think they didn't carry you on that boat with them, but in a way, you're right there with them. Verse 5 says these mariners were afraid. Cried every man unto his own God. Boy, fear has gripped their heart. Running with the devil has put others in danger. The mariners were afraid. But what does it say at the end of verse number 3 of Jonah? And he lay and was fast asleep. Boy, we in some days they spoke sleeping through things. I can't even believe what they sleeping through. Did y'all watch any of the Republican National Convention this week? Now see, if you watch that thing from a, from a worldly point of view, you really believe Donald Trump's going to get us out of all of this. I was feeling pretty good till I seen some of them people he let speak at last night. And I saw a man who was openly gay and say he was proud to be a Republican. He was proud to be a gay man and he was proud to follow to places we'd never been before. And that whole place stood up and cheered and said, USA, USA. Brother Steve, does that make you mad? It breaks my heart. Because see, I was talking about them Hodges a while ago, but let me tell you something about this perverted crowd these days. Jesus died for them too. And when it's days of this kind of boldness, I know their time. Nineveh had, four, Nineveh had 40 days. I ain't sure America's got 40 minutes. What 
does God need the church to do in these last days, Brother Lance? He don't need for us to get up and just beat people to death. He needs us to get up and preach in power the gospel of Jesus Christ that those chains of sin might be broken and bondage might come. It ain't just the queers that'll be in hell. It ain't just the alcoholics that'll be in hell. It ain't the dope head. It'll be those that's rejected Jesus Christ who will be in hell. It ain't the sin, man. It's the sinner. Rejecting Jesus Christ. I ain't even going to pass my, my introduction. And I believe maybe this is where God meant for us to get to right here. Look at verse 12. He set me up and cast me forth into the sea. So shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. I believe maybe the church is found in verse 13 in our day. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it to the land. But they could not, for the sea wrought and was tempestuous against them. Wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee. Let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not upon us innocent blood. For thou, O Lord, hast done as it pleased thee. So they took up Jonah, cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, offered a sacrifice unto the Lord, and they made vows. Hear me this morning, church. What I believe God has for you in your pain this morning. Jonah's running, Jonah's rebellion had put these men at a place of great pain. And the only way these men ever got any peace, the only way these men ever got to the place of worship where they see them in verse 16 as they fear the Lord and offer sacrifices unto the Lord as they make vows, the only way they ever got to the place of worship, they first had to throw Jonah off the boat. Some of us this morning need to throw some Jonas off our ship. It's holding us back from worship. It's holding us back from peace. It's holding us back from getting where God means for us to be. I believe God's brought us to right here. Well, Lanny, you started it, so we're just going to be honest. Amen. Some of us need to throw some Jonas off our boats. Some of you need to throw some Jonas off your phone. Some of you's got some Jonas in your phone that you ain't gonna never have peace or worship because of them Jonas you got in your phone. You know what I found out about them phones and that contact list? You can push that contact list and a name will come up. If it says edit and you scroll down that thing, there's a red button where you can get rid of some Jonas. Amen. Delete this contact. Our Baptist churches is full of folk this morning who's playing footsies with Jonah. Amen. They right there at the place that the storm and the fear and all is wearing them out and they won't give in. They won't let go. They hanging on to Jonah. They doing what these men did. It said they rode to more trying to bring it to land. If God's revealing some Jonas to you this morning, you need to get out of your life. God's never going to bless you. I don't care how much you row. It said the sea was against them. Who sent the storm? That's the same as saying, Brother Ryan, God was against them. God was against them and that that they were doing. They were trying to make provision where God had already made provision. Jonah told them, said, I'm the problem. You need to throw me off of your boat. Sad thing is, we got folk this morning, they got enough sense knowing we need to get rid of them. We got enough problems this morning, we need to get rid of them. Boy, 
boy, some needs to get some Jonas off their phone. Some needs to get some Jonas off their Facebook, amen. Friends. Facebook friends. Boy, we could start tallying up in here this morning. There's probably thousands of Facebook friends. And you know what you do? You spend your day seeing what your friends is doing. Now, you ain't talked to them in 25 years. But you're interested that they went into Walmart 10 minutes ago. They didn't even go in. They took a picture of themselves to show you what they had on before they went in. We getting real now. Is that not stupid? Is that not stupid? That God gives you precious time in this life so that you might win another one for the cause of Christ. So that you might pray for another one. And what are we doing? We're sitting there wasting precious time. You say, now, Brother Steve, we got Facebook. I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a deal with you. If the only Facebook friends you got is churches and who you got in this family right here, I'm for you, amen. <laughs> but some of you this morning has got some friends that's putting stuff out there that when it goes on, it catches your eye. And it leads you to places you never thought you'd go. It'll plant a thought. And you'll say, oh, I got to look past that. I know a preacher whose phone got hacked by a pornographic site. And he kept the phone. How stupid is that? You think that just happened? Honey, the devil gets such victory over us because we so dumb. We set ourselves up for failure. Thank God that God can take things and use them for his glory. He ain't a preacher in America that's preached more against Facebook than this one, Brother Clay. My people's been here any amount of time, but I do know this. God has let me see that I get calls every week from all over this country. Folk are logging on to this place on Monday to get some preaching. There's got to be a balance, though. There's got to be a balance. If there's not some balance in your life, your life's going to turn into a place of rebellion and running and getting on boats you never thought you'd get on, buying tickets you never thought you'd buy, and then laying down and going to sleep right in the middle of it. They had to throw Jonah overboard. Well, Steve, you telling me i got to throw my kid away? Brother Steve, you telling me I got to throw this problem in my family away? The best thing they could do for Jonah was throw him overboard, Brother Chris. I've been praying for that man for five years. Never had any peace about where he stood with God. That man ain't ever done nothing but love me and be good to this church right here. Brother Chris, I just never had any peace. And see, if you get so wrapped up in people and their situations and all that's going on with them, it'll just have you rowing and not getting anywhere. But there'll be some things, Brother Larry, if you'll throw them overboard. Do you think the whale looked like a provision to Jonah? You think Jonah said, praise God, there comes a whale. I don't know that Jonah had ever eaten there in the Mediterranean Sea. I don't know there would ever been a whale in the Mediterranean Sea before that day. But I know that day there was a whale somewhere. Swimming around and the Holy Ghost said, hey, whale, 
you got to get to the sea of Mediterranean because I got a backslid preacher if he can get thrown out of a boat. Amen. There's people all over this building. I couldn't fix your situations. But boy, God help me. I, when God gives me the green light, I want to throw you overboard. Amen. And here about a month ago, on a Sunday morning, I looked up, and there come Brother Chris, and I was thinking, Lord God, I hope he's coming to hug me and not slap me. Amen. <laughs> Stand up. Y'all know why I said that now, don't you? <laughs> and when he got to me, and when he got to me, he threw them arms around me. He said, Brother Steve, I'm sick of living like this. He was off the boat, man. The whale done swallowed him up. Saved him for the glory of God. Let me tell you how revival will be a whole lot sweeter for you this week. If you'll throw some things off your boat this morning. Boy, I pray during this message, son. Some of y'all get your phones out anyway. I pray y'all been going to that red button. Amen. Pew. I pray Facebook locks up this afternoon from dead friends laying everywhere. Amen. Dead friends. Throwing them off a boat. Man. Getting rid of some things. Things that's holding you back. Things that's making you row and ain't getting you anywhere. Things that you just got to get your hands off of. You got to throw them off your boat so you can get back to the place of peace and the place of worship. Some of you ain't worshiped in so long because you got so much junk on your boat. Slid preachers in the belly of a whale. And these boys is on a boat having church. And God's right in the middle of all of it. The same God days of worshiping on that ship is the same God that's working on a backslid preacher in the belly of a fish. Because I'm going to tell you right now, and this is going to lead me in the message tonight. If y'all don't come back tonight, man, there's a little something wrong. with you probably walked out at the intermission of gone with the wind. Amen. <laughs> Jonah's problem is not his sin. Jonah's problem is his sin. The book of Jonah ain't all about rebellion and running, Brother Ann. It's about rescue. And God's here this morning. In the rescuing business. As we stand with heads bowed and eyes closed. Boy, ought to be some on us already running this way right now. Ready to throw some things overboard. Ready to get some things. Now see, you couldn't write. You couldn't, you couldn't write all of this as you've lived it. You, you couldn't write all of this as you've come to this morning, as you've got to this day. But, but now that the Holy Spirit set you down in this place, in this booth this morning, and, and set you down right here at this city, Boy, that that you've been able to do is reflect over the things that God, those provided things He's put in your life. And He's provided this church and this preacher and this pulpit today to reveal to you He's just some things you need to get rid of. Because until you get rid of them, until you get them off your ship, the Lord's going to be against you. Father, I thank you for opportunity to preach in a particular time at a particular place.